case anybody wants to listen to it. All right, so we are into the integumentary system chapter, I think, this week. You look and see. Yep, we, we uh, had tissues scheduled for last week. We have integumentary for this week. We start skeletal next week. And we have our second lecture quiz tomorrow, we said over chapter five, just to remind people of that. So um, are there questions on uh, tissues or I'll open it up? What would you like? Um, so like, how are the questions going to look like on the quiz for like, because I know like for tissues, you need to know like the location, their function. So like, and like what they look like. So like, how will they like be on the quiz? Well, I haven't written it yet. But um, remember, these quizzes are, oh, are these, I'm getting my micro quizzes and my ANP quizzes mixed up. Uh, are these five or 10 point quizzes? I just forget now. Um, they're 10. Right. So I could theoretically put a histologic section, a photograph of a tissue, like uh, I'll just say fat. That's pretty easy to identify. And ask you, you know, identify the following histologic section. Uh, what tissue is this showing? Um, and as you said, I could ask where uh, in the body, might you find it? Um, what does it? What is its function? What does it do? So for fat, you could say it stores energy, it insulates, it cushions organs like the kidneys. There's a multitude of functions. Um, or if I showed you um, a uh, histologic section of of compact bone. Remember, that was a bunch of the trees in the forest that had the rings. You know, could you identify that as bone tissue? Um, if I asked you, um, name two of the three types of fibers found in the matrix of connective tissues, could you list two of the three? Those are collagenous, elastic, and reticular. Those are the three. So there was a, uh, a slide in the PowerPoint lecture that discussed um, both the common cell types and the common types of fibers. Not every connective tissue is going to have all three of those, of course. But if you think about, say, tendons or ligaments, which are the dense fibrous connective tissue. That's going to have a preponderance of collagenous fibers to provide the strong tensile strength that we associate with tendons and ligaments. They have to be strong because a lot of uh, tension is placed on them, right? As you walk, as you move. Um, but I, I think you're right, Sadie, just going back to the idea of what kind of tissue is this? Is it connective? Is it epithelial? Is it nervous? Is it muscle? Where would I go in the body to find? If I, if I was asked, what could I find some of these? And what do they do? That's, that's just a good thing to be going over in your mind uh, as you study for the quiz or for the second exam or for even the lab quiz. Um, And we have a lab quiz coming up, not this Wednesday, but a week from Wednesday, and that will cover some of the tissues as well. So, so you're you're you know, killing, kind of killing two birds with one stone. Learning it, learning the tissues in lecture is going to help you for the tissues in lab, and vice versa, because you're going to you know we've been looking at tissues in lab the last couple of weeks. And um, you're going to need to know those to be able to recognize those on the next uh, 
uh, practical. I don't know, did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Sure. So you're, you can expect to see multiple choice types of questions. Um, you can expect to see maybe like short answer. By that, I mean a couple sentences at the most. Um, uh, you've had one lecture quiz already, I know. Um, so it, it's going to just kind of be similar to that. Multiple choice. Um, I don't generally do matching, although I could do matching, I guess. You're not having to deal with essay questions on a quiz. So. Anything you'd like to review in chapter five? That's the tissue chapter. And we can talk lab stuff too. Um, so like in the book, um, there's not really like a picture for glandular epithelium. It's just like you have the, it shows like the, yeah. I don't even know how to say it, like the apocrine gland. gland. Right. So like, yeah. um, I said to you the other day that you don't need to worry about um, the, the glandular epithelium other than be able to distinguish between exocrine and endocrine glands. That's described there in page 157. The difference being that exocrine glands, which are made up of glandular epithelium, um, are secreting their, their secretions, if you will, into ducts, into tubes that open onto some surface. It could be the, the salivary glands um, secreting saliva that dump into your mouth. It could be the pancreas producing uh, pancreatic enzymes that dump into the first segment of the small intestine. Um, contrast, contrast that to endocrine glands that secrete their, their products into, into the bloodstream, for example. So when we think of endocrine glands, we think of the endocrine system, we think of hormones. So the pituitary gland in your brain, the um, ovaries, the testes um, are all examples of endocrine glands that secrete their hormones into the bloodstream and then the bloodstream transports those hormones uh, to specific target tissues of the body, um, even though they get sent all over the place, only certain tissues will respond to the effects of insulin or whatever horm hormone you want to talk about. Um, so you don't need to know that exocrine glands are subdivided into merocrine, apocrine, holocrine. You know, that's that, not something you need to worry about. Nor, nor do you need to know, um, you know, figure 15.12 or 15.13. Don't worry about structural differences of exocrine glands. Um, the table 5.3, don't worry about that.
I think there are various tables in chapter five that are great summary tables like table 5.5 for epithelial tissues. They give you all the different kinds of where they are in the body. What do they do? Those are, are nice to reference. Um, table 5.6 goes over what I described earlier as you know, what are the different kinds of fibers you can find within the matrices of certain connective tissues? What are the common types of cells that you find? Again, the PowerPoint, the lecture, uh, Zoom lecture talked about all these. Um, so I think a lot of these tables um, where they summarize these tissues are, are really good. Table 5.7 is really nice as well. Table 5.8 great tables if you want sort of a quick and dirty listing of the different kinds of connective tissues, the different kinds of muscle tissue. The chapter summary in the very end of each chapter is also a great, great um, place to look to get the, the bare bones of what's described in the chapter. Uh, it's, it's paring it down quite a bit, but it's it's a, it's an excellent uh, listing. So looking at the chapter summaries, if you don't have time to look at or reread the chapter, could be very helpful. I mean, we are now into the fifth chapter, so by now you should kind of know how the book is laid out. Yeah. You should be getting comfortable with the layout of the book, and yeah. um, it's a it's a good book. I think it does a very fine job. Um, hitting what we need to talk about. I mean, I, I hope you're watching the Zoom lectures um, along with uh, looking at the PowerPoints. So Beth, we're just kind of opening up the floor for, for questions related to tissues, be it from lecture or lab. Um, we're starting the integumentary system in lecture as well as in lab this week. Um, we'll also be doing a couple exercises on the skeletal system in lab starting tomorrow too. Okay. Um... The quiz, to, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, the quiz tomorrow is on the, I wrote it down. What is it on? Tissues. Chapter five, tissues. Okay. Yeah. I was just making sure. Right. That's so it. We, That's... So we've talked about the tissues in, in lab the last two weeks. Yeah. Some slides. Um, so you've been you've been subjected to them already. Um, you've heard me talk a little bit about them. Hopefully you've had a chance in the last week to get into the Zoom recordings of Chapter Five lecture. Um, if you haven't, you should by now have done that, okay. um, and should be starting Chapter Six actually. Again, we're we're sticking to the lecture schedule, right? As yep. outlined in the syllabus. And uh, I know every week we're doing a chapter. You know, it, it, we're busy, we're doing stuff. Uh, no rest for the weary kind of thing. Jeez. I'm, I have yet to watch a full TV show. You have yet to watch what, John? A full TV show. What's that? TV, you don't have TV, do you? <laughs> Unplug it, John. You can't watch TV anymore. Well, you got to have some fun in life. You can't be like living A&P your whole life. That's not good either. It's A&P, it's statistics, it's uh, databases, and upper division writing. Right. Yeah, I'm stuck here. I'm stuck right here. You're learning so much. I can see the smoke pouring out of your ears. That ain't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're exuding knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I have a I have a, an old toy that my dad bought 
when I was a kid. It's a bartender. It's one of these, these battery operated toys. It takes two size D batteries. It goes into the, into the, the bar that this, this doll stands in front of. And what he does when you turn it on is he has this, uh, uh, he has this, uh, I don't know, what would a bartenders, they only mix drinks. They have like this, uh, you know, metal glass part. And then there's like a plastic top that they put on and he shakes shaker? it up. Shaker. Yeah. So he shakes this, this thing up and you can hear the beads inside, you know, make a noise. And then he, he turns and he pours it into a martini glass. And then this is all automated. It's hilarious. And then he, he takes the gra glass and he goes up and he drinks it and his, 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 his lips pout. And then he has smoke come out of his ears and, and his face turns red. It is the cutest little toy. So I thought of you the other day, John, <laughs> with all the information that I'm feeding you, right? You guys are learning so much. So this, this right I mean, here. Overload. This right here, right? This book is a medical coding book. Wow. So I'm following along with, uh, with all of the chapters that are there in this book. So if mm -hmm. it's blood or if it's cartilage, they all here. And then this is how they medically code them mm -hmm. as they're, as the doctors diagnosed or perform a procedure. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. So are the, are the connective tissues causing anybody a lot of angst um, or epithelial tissues? Um, or, or, or is this chapter pretty much laid out, cut and dried, not too bad? Um, Sadie's like, so on, you know, is that what you did? Yeah. Iffy. Iffy. Um, my thing is just like remembering where they all are. Like, I'm just trying yeah. to get that down. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's pretty much my thing, too, is like, where they are in the body. Yeah. Well, remember, as I said last week, the authors have done a nice job inserting little diagrams within the tissues. And I'm sure the reason they did that is because they know students have a hard time remembering where do I go to find skeletal muscle or uh, smooth or at the bottom here, of course, is cardiac. But then they have these diagrams that might help you sort of uh, remember when you in your mind's eye, picture these, you might remember, for example, that hyaline cartilage, you can find that connecting the ribs to the sternum, so shown here in orange, right? Or on the, end, on the ends of long bones is cartilage, hyaline cartilage, or your, um, before you, your bones were fully ossified, you were made up of hyaline cartilage. Yeah, I, I, I think flashcards would, would really lend themselves well. And we talked about that, I think, the other day, too. Um, if, if anything screams <laughs> note cards, note cards, note cards, it's the tissues. And I know, I know, Sadie. I think you had indicated you, on one side, have the definition maybe, and on the other side of the card, you have a picture of it or something. Yeah, and and so that should that should work well for you, I would think. Um. Yeah. When I did like the epithelial tissues, I just did like the other picture, and I didn't really notice like the one that was like the actual like you know, like actually like looking through it at a microscope, like they had it as well as like the connective tissues, like the little diagrams of like where they are in the body. So I'm uh -huh. gonna reprint those out and then put those on as well. So where did you, where did you copy off the diagrams from? I just took a picture on my phone, cropped it and then went to a Word document and then just put like pulled them all from my pictures and yeah. then just print them on a piece of paper and cut them out. Okay, so let me let me uh, have you guys look real quick here. I think if we go to the course uh, shell, let me just pull up on Blackboard. Um, I think you can access all this stuff. So let me share. 
you see the blackboard shell here? Yes. Okay. So let's see. Stuff to copy and bring to lab each week. Let's look at let's, what exercise is tissues. Is it 10, 11? No, eight. Okay, let's pick. Let's pick nine. All right. Um, I was just wondering if there was some diagrams here. So nine's not included here. I know when we get to bones, there are we, some, yeah. we have a ton of different unlabeled diagrams, right? That you can print off and, and label. Um, I can't print those off. They won't let me because I've been doing the same thing, right? So I usually, I just put them on a color copier, print them off and then put them in, but I can't print those off. Well, so you got to copy and save and then print, huh? Is that what you're saying? You got to save it as won't. or whatever? And then, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, um, I don't know what to tell you there. Um, but going back to tissues, I, I thought, I guess there isn't anything here in terms of tissues, is there? It starts with integument theory. I think this is 11. Yeah, so there's skin that we're gonna do tomorrow. Um, oh, let me think about whether there are any, any diagrams that you could print. So maybe maybe the cutting and pasting is the easiest way to go. I just am trying to think about this. Can you put it in a PDF file? Well, I'm just thinking about where to go to even get the diagrams themselves. Um, I would think had I had access to those, I would have included them like I did for, for these unlabeled figures. You know what I'm saying? See, there, there aren't actually any figures in exercise nine. There's just photographs of the connective tissues that we referenced, remember? Figures, unlabeled figures are asking you to put numbers next to structures. Right, think back to the anatomical terminology. There were figures there, remember? Mm -hmm. So um, what I could do is look to see if the publisher has any, um, any, any information there. I don't know what you're seeing on your screen now. Um, There's like labeling access. Okay, you're seeing the online learning center? Yeah. Okay, so see, this is the ninth edition of the book. This was an earlier edition. We're up to the to the 15th now. So this was something I think maybe did um uh I actually uh, have that book <laughs> from 20 years ago. <laughs> Who's your tutor? Your tutor, Sunday tutor. Oh. Kira and yeah, Kira. Did didn't she show you this? I think. No, not this. She said she had like the eleventh book or something. Yeah, she sent me a link for that. Did she? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's. It looks to me like they don't have anything here. Let's see. This is the nerve. Oh well, see, this is interesting. So here's tissues. This is again from an old, old book. I'm surprised it's even available. Somebody told me about this recently. So 
So, you know, maybe I could do is share this online learning center from a very old textbook. And gosh, it seems like it's all still workable. I'm surprised the publisher hasn't taken it offline. I don't know. Anyway, I see there is some stuff here for tissues. So you can go in and play with this if you'd like too. That book came with the CD too. Really? Uh, yeah, number nine. Yeah, this is a very old edition. Yeah. <laughs> Although it says 2021 here at the bottom. So that's interesting. Why would it say that? Huh. Well, anyway, um, can if you, you put want that to, the link, yeah. If you want to, uh, if you want to either reference this recording or write this down now, you're welcome to do that. But maybe what I could do is just do this and put it in chat. Yeah. I'm so technologically at with it, aren't I? Oh my gosh, it scares me. It scares me. <laughs> I don't know, click on it and then book, bookmark it to your computer right now, do it. And you got it, right? It should pull up, shouldn't it? It does. Yeah, pull it up, bookmark it and check it out. Um, so you just, you can pull down the chapter. I don't think the chapter numbers have changed a whole lot since the ninth edition. Do you know what I'm saying? Five is tissue, six is skin, seven is skeletal system. Yeah, so the numbers are the same. And then you can go in here and you can explore. They have true false quiz, they have multiple choice quiz. So yeah. Why they don't have this for your edition is because they'd rather have you spend 40 extra bucks to get the connect and then they would have all this. And I'm like, no, that's, that is unethical. You should be providing this free along with the book, which was not cheap. Okay, so anyway, the reason that I went here, I was going up to my bookmarks here, here is the 15th edition. This is the book we're in now, okay? Um, and I was going to that to see whether um, this the instructor edition, which I'm gonna to have to log into, has any thing related to tissues in it. And they've really pared this down to the point where there's not a heck of a lot here other than PowerPoints and that kind of thing. Um, Lab manual images. Let's just go to, is there anything on tissues? I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing here or not. Is it following? Do you see lab manual images? Yeah, okay. So it's, it's loading here. Let's see what it's got. If it's got something useful, I'll post it in the course shell and you guys can have access to it. Let's see what it's got. Um, let's see. Okay, so it, it is going to reproduce the tissue diagrams that you have in exercise nine. Okay, this is basically page, well, I don't know, it's page 68 of my book. It's different on your book, but it's got, it's the same page. So if you would like me to try to um, post this stuff, I can do that. Um, might not happen today, but see, it has all these unlabeled diagrams, at least for the tissues, I could do that. The other thing that I'd like us to check out is what does the student edition have? I'm going to 
exit out of this if I can and go to the student edition, which you guys should be able to get into. See, they don't have anything here. They used to have all sorts of stuff. Now they don't do that anymore. So I don't know. Do you want me to, to see if I can upload some of the tissue figures? OK. What I'll do um, is put them in the course shell. Um, So what I'll do is I'll, I'll add them in into this file here and I'll just I'll, I'll change this you know to include um, exercises eight, nine and ten. okay And then if you want to print them off and cut them and paste them on, on, in, onto your note cards or whatever if that saves you the time then Thank you. Yeah, sure, not a problem. I know I had them for the vast majority of exercises we do this semester, but um, I think the reason that they're not here was because there was no labeled figures in those tissue exercises. They provided the diagrams, the photographs, which obviously could be helpful. Okay, so, so back to Questions. Anything you'd like clarified? Have you started in the uh, integumentary system, chapter six? I have. Great. So on page 180, mm -hmm. where it starts to talk about the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layers, mm -hmm. will we see all of those listings on exam? Like the um, hair shaft. Okay, let me pull up the, um, let me pull up that diagram specifically. So this is chapter six. Do you see the PowerPoint? Yeah, I do. Okay. So you're referencing this particular that diagram, right? Yep, yep, that. Okay. So your question is what again? Will all of those come up in some kind of way on exam? Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about what these structures are. Right. And so yeah, I mean. Yes. No. This, is a, this is a big chapter. This well, big chapter it's, five. It's it's actually. <laughs> I hate to disagree with you, John, but it's actually one of the shortest chapters. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I I I versed that wrong. It has. It seems like it's more like compact. 
right? I mean, the information. Well, it's it's only about it's really about fifteen pages long. I think that's a pretty short chapter, given some of these other ones. Um, you know, I've always felt, and I and I'm probably biased because I've right. taught it forever. But of all the organ systems that we cover in A and P one, right, there's like five. To me, this is one of the most straightforward chapters. Now, I'm not saying there's not a lot of terms. There obviously there are. Right? Yeah, it's a lot of terms. That's what I meant. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to go through. If you if you watch the Zoom lectures, which I'm sure you are, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We walk through the PowerPoint slides. Yep. I walk you through the slides. We spend some time. This is a slide early in the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And so I throw this, I throw this at you, you know, kind of right off the bat, not expecting you're going to know all these things, of course, but okay. kind of all indicate right. that that there's a lot of stuff. And then as we go through now, first the epidermis, and then we do the dermis, we talk about all these various structures. Okay. We go through all of all of these different topics. So that by the time you get done with the PowerPoint, you can go back to that diagram and it's like, oh yeah, okay, I see where the where the Meissner's corpuscles are, why they're high up near the, the epidermis, and while the piscinian are deeper. Because I've 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 learned that the piscinian corpuscles are responding to deeper pressures. That fly or mosquito that's ready to bite me, I detect that thanks to the Meissner's corpuscles because they're very near the surface of the skin. Um, so yeah, th that diagram really culminates in, in having gone through and learned about all the different parts. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't let this overwhelm you, but you can come back to this at the end of the chapter and, and, it, and a lot of these structures should, should look familiar. You should know, you know what a dermal, Papilla is, well, dermal referring to dermis. Papilla is a finger-like projection. And you can sort of see a bunch of these dermal papillae. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. They're like little hills of white, right? Colored white, because they're in the dermis. Um, we're gonna be looking at a model tomorrow of the skin and we're going to be identifying some of these structures. I, I'm going to make the assumption, and it may be a wrong assumption to make, but I'm going to make it nonetheless, that when we get into lab tomorrow and we look at that model, that that will, be, that will not be the first time you have looked at the integumentary system. The reality would be, if I polled people and they were honest, more than half of the people would not have seen anything about the integumentary system probably yet they haven't gotten to it. And you, you've got to keep up. You've got to stay on schedule. Otherwise, when you see this for the first time, it's like, holy moly, that's a lot of terms. How am I going to learn all this? Um, well, you got to work through it. But by looking at the model tomorrow, that should help cement some of these structures. But if you've never heard of them before, it's, it's going to be a little bit Oh, I don't know how to put it. Uh, it's going to be a little anxious, an anxious time for you, I guess. I don't Try to get in to at least the first part of the PowerPoint Zoom recording lecture. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to get more out of lab tomorrow, especially as it pertains to the uh, uh, integumentary system exercise, which I think is 11. Yeah. And exercise 11 in the lab book, again, we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. We'll spend some time on it, but we're going to spend quite a bit of time tomorrow um, on some of the major bones uh, of the body. It's exercise 13. And some people have already learned the bones, probably, when you were in high school, maybe. A lot of, a lot of you may have learned the bones. Or well, you're going to relearn them if you haven't. And, um, and then we're going to spend a bit of time looking at the skull, exercise 14. That's going to be a, a good hour's worth of time tomorrow going through the skull bones. 
So I'll also mention that in the um, course shell, there is a handout that you should be bringing with you tomorrow. Um, so I'll go to content, stuff to copy and bring to lab each week, and then scroll down and it'll say bone structure and classification. So you want to bring this with you tomorrow. You want to bring the skin model handout tomorrow. Um, you want to bring the osteon model key with you tomorrow. You want to bring this bone list because we're starting exercise 14 tomorrow. We'll do 15, 16, and 17 next Wednesday, week from Wednesday. And I would also bring this, this uh, table of terms. So there's one, two, three, four, five handouts you should be bringing tomorrow. We'll see how many people have them made better. Because hopefully you, you run all this stuff off you know, weeks ago, you got it all in a little binder, right? That's the smart way to do it. You said six or five, I'm sorry. Is there one more after bone list? There's one here. Yeah. Two. Oh, we don't three, need the skin? Okay. Four. Okay. Five. And five. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, we're bring the skin one, bring the skin one. Yeah, I have it, but okay, I just was confused. Okay. Yeah, we're doing we're doing several exercises tomorrow. We're doing uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14, I believe. Yeah. Um, so I guess back um, to the integumentary system. Um, anything you want to want to ask about John or anybody on? No, because I didn't get that far into it. I got to 182 and stopped. I got to the table 6.1. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to review for lab, lab stuff? I know you just had the practical. So we haven't done other than some connective tissues, muscle, and then the one nerve, nervous tissue slide. But I'm there's, not a, there's not a quiz on that stuff until next Wednesday in lab, so. Okay, that, I, I know I missed the first couple of minutes, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. So this Wednesday, we don't have a quiz or is it on the second half of chapter, set, the tissues chapter? Like the connect well, you, you, you tell me. <laughs> well, I didn't look you, at this. You gotta look at your syllabus. Okay, yeah, I, I just, okay, I have yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you all know how to figure out what is going on each week, right? So there is a lecture quiz, our second lecture quiz tomorrow. And we okay. discussed last week, I think, that we were going to have that be over the tissues chapter. Okay. The lecture tissues. Lecture chapter five. Okay, the whole chapter, I guess. That's yeah. all I was, okay. Cause yeah. I just was wondering because we kind of broke it up. That's all. Okay, I thought yeah. so. Thank yeah. you. Thank um, you. Because I know that's a lot of material, I, I, I do get that, but by now, by this time in the schedule, you should have gotten through chapter five, you already, you already covered it in lab, 
and and uh, last week was devoted to to chapter five. Yeah, I'm already done with chapter five. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't, you know, cut up the way we kind of did it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Thank no, no, we're not, we're not, we're saying the whole okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Sure. No problem. Okay, we got a few more minutes left. Any last minute questions? Um, are we getting our lab practicals back tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Yes, I have the practicals done. We'll be getting those back. You don't have to if you don't want to. <laughs> um, so this might sound kind of a stupid question, but like keratin, that's basically like dead tissue, right? I mean, well, it's dead? No, no. Keratin is a protein right. that accumulates in our epidermis that right like the be, outermost layer and your yeah. hair too right yeah absolutely it's the it's not just epidermis of the skin but also hair undergoes keratinization but the the uh, the evolution of of hair is really um occurring at the base of the hair follicle and that's a downward extension of the epidermis oh because oh. if you look if you look at the the slide we just talked about not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. PowerPoint. Um, That's what I was kind of thinking about it. So, okay. Um, okay. so like by the time it gets out here, it's is it dead? <laughs> do, you, do you see my? Uh, yep. Are yep. you seeing this move around? <laughs> yes. Okay. So here's the epidermis, the 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 tan brown, the light pink, the dark pink, and the medium pink. All this is epidermis. Okay. So if we look and, and track the downward extension here of the epidermis, it extends deep into the dermis, as you can see from my, my movement of my little cursor. Right. So the hair is made up of dead epidermal cells. Oh. And like the skin up here, acquires this keratin protein. Okay. And the protein helps the hair and the outermost layer here of the epidermis shown here in tan. Um, this is this is very waterproof characteristic of the skin due to the keratin embedded in this in the cell membranes. I okay. believe. So so it is a process of acquiring the keratin proteins that are stored in the cells okay. that provide this waterproof tough fibrous outer covering, if you will. But as these cells, again, move further from the blood supply, be it skin cells here or hair cells, they die and they undergo this keratinization process. Okay. Because it's at the base of the epidermis here in what's called the stratum basale layer. It's the deepest layer of the epidermis. Okay where active cell division takes place. That process also occurs at the base of the hair follicle, way down here, at what's called the hair papilla. And that active cell division, which you know all about, because we studied it back in chapter three, um, as, the, as the hair cells here um, in the deep papilla divide, they get further from the blood supply. See the blood capillary bed down here? Yeah. There's also blood capillary beds up here in the dermal papillae. Okay. When they, these cells get further from the blood supply, they die. They undergo keratinization and eventually they're sloughed off. So there's always constant cell division going on in the epidermis. Okay. Like there's always cell division going on at the base of the papilla because your hair grows. Right. But so these, then, this is made of dead cells. This is hair it made of dead cells. Is it kind of similar what happens in the nail bed? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's the same process, really. Okay. Yep. Cool. yep. All right. All right. Yep. Thank can, you. Can it be overproduced or underproduced? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, can it be overproduced? Well, if it's overproduced, get it cut. <laughs> no, no, no. The creatine. Oh, oh, the I keratin. See. Keratin, yeah. 
Yeah, um, I can't answer that question, but I bet if you research this, there are some disorders whereby there's insufficient keratinization or excess keratinization. I don't know the answer. That's a great question. But hmm. I would not be surprised if there's some skin disorder that involves um, some abnormal formation of keratin. I would be shocked if there's not. Yeah, I bet you I could find it in that coding book, which I tried to <laughs> circumvent just well, now. <laughs> what, they, what would you call it? It might have a funny name, the disease or disorder. Yeah. Isn't I, it, the sebaceous gland, doesn't that affect balding? Or the no. what comes out of it? No. Did you say balding? Yes. Like, yeah. Your thyroid does. And so I know. There's, there's a clinical application box there on page 187 that talks about hair loss. You can read that. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I talked I, about. I learned the craziest thing about the sebaceous gland. This woman was a nurse and married for years, and all of a sudden her husband took on a strange smell just kind of body odor. So they ended up going to like groups of people with Parkinson's and she was overwhelmed by the smell. Well, because she was a nurse, she talked to a doctor and they ended up testing all this stuff. And she actually picked out of like 20 people, 19 of them had Parkinson's and one was diagnosed later. So they were able to like, you know, sort of figure out what it was in the sebaceous fluid that was changed. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. It was so oh. neat. So you're saying the Parkinsonian patients were ex exuding this odor that yeah. the woman could detect. Yeah, like her husband and her had been married like 10 years. When they were like 28, she said she started to just kind of smell this. You know, you know, some people have just yeah. a little bit of an odor. Yeah. Well, so they started to go to these like um, Parkinson groups. And she, right when she got there, she said, honey, I can't stay in here. It's so, you know, it was just so Powering. overwhelming because yeah. there were so yeah. many people. Wow. So. She ended up talking to this doctor and they, they did these tests, you know, and uh, literally every single person yeah. that she said yeah. had it, had it, except for one person. And then he ended up being yeah. diagnosed yeah. a couple of years later. Yeah. So this is not unlike a dog that can detect cancer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so crazy, the stuff that leads us to cures, you know? Yeah. Or, no, or that, like, that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, I thought that was incredible. Right. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's, that's really interesting, Priya. Thank you for bringing that up. I'd like to learn more about that. That's fascinating. Yeah. She's a super smeller. I know, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that are super smellers. They call yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You find it a lot with chefs. Chefs can, chefs use those senses yep. to a T. Yeah. Right. Yep. right. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm okay. going to let you guys go. I got to get ready for my next class. Okay. Um, so I'll record this uh, and or post it, I should say, uh, in the course shell, and I'll up upload those uh, tissue diagrams in the next couple of days. Okay. Anybody want to get together? Let me know. <laughs> okay. I will. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. okay. See Have you later. Day. Bye. Yeah. Bye.